Hello guys and welcome back to the channel once again. Right, just a little um, update on what we've got going on here at the, in the workshop. So these are the, most of the bits for this Cosworth engine that we're building up here underneath this sheet. This is the engine that we built up from nothing. Um, so I've had to buy in all the bits. Uh, we wanted a 200 block as opposed to the 205 block. We've got the ported cylinder head here, which is a two wheel drive head. Uh, we've got a good standard crank gone into this, an uprated oil pump. Now, as you all can imagine with all this classic car stuff at the moment, getting hold of anything for these Cosworths is not just a nightmare, but by the time everyone's stuck the Cosworth tax on, you're now paying a fortune for everything. So trying to get all the bits to build an entire tall engine uh, with the, you know, the manifolds and the bits and bobs on is an absolute nightmare and you, it can run away with you easily. So the customer's gone and I've given him a list of some stuff. He's gone away and bought some stuff. Um, obviously I've got hold of the main things like the, the head, the block, the cams, you know, the main sort of base of the engine. Um, he's got the, the sump here and the rocker cover. And here we have a table full of most of the other bits. So we've got an inlet manifold here. Uh, we've got a distributor, we've got the throttle body, all this has got to be stripped down and blasted and painted, etc. We've got the pulleys here, which the customer has took away, painted and uh, machined off the face there. So they look really nice. Match the sump and the rocker cover. Um, we've got the auxiliary pulley here. We've got a new belt and tensioner kit. We've got a new water pump. Uh, this is a genuine cast iron item. We've got the auxiliary shaft. I mean, things like this is auxiliary shaft and the, and the, and the clamps and the proper bolts and um, the auxiliary seal holder. You know, it, it's a nightmare to try and get it. Um, this is the baffle, the original baffle that goes in the sump. We've done away with that. And he's got a G19 gated baffle in there. Um, so most of these bits we've got now. The only thing I think we're waiting for is uh, a, doo -doo 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 -doo, a front crank seal um, holder and cover. You need, we need that, that's an aluminium item. We need that to bolt on first to be able to bolt the sump on. Um, and then obviously the pulleys and etc. go on after that to get the cam belt kit on. So once we've got that, and a few of the little bits, we can, we can get all that on, we can get it all timed up. The customer's gone away and got his own bell housing here. So this bell housing is a Cortina one or something, but basically what we wanted is, a, we wanted the Cosworth fitment on the front or the Pinto, because that's basically what they are. Um, and we also wanted the Type 9 fitting on the back. And the reason for that is because if I take you around here, the customer has got a very nice Quaif sequential gearbox to go on it. Um, so that bell housing there is coming off. Obviously that bell housing will go on and hopefully everything will be okay. The shaft out the front there is the same. It's the same as a, that's an old Cosworth plate that I've tried on. It's the same spline, etc. So all I've done is we've used an original, uh, well, an uprated, Cosworth clutch cover. That's all balanced there to the flywheel. Um, we've just got to sort of clean that up a little bit more. And we've got an uprated helix paddle plate there. So this car is, this is going in a Mark II Escort there. So this is going to be extremely exciting. Usual story, customer sort of wanted to edge for about 400 horsepower, but now we're going along, he's got this 500 in his head. So we may have to make a few changes um, before we start bolting everything back on. The, the, the head ports should be right for this. We may have to stick another inlet cam in there, but we'll, we'll have a chat with him and see what, I mean, my feeling is a four, 450 horsepower in a Mark II Escort with a sequential box is gonna be fairly interesting. So, so that one there is coming along nicely. Something a little bit different to engines, and we do stuff like this. This is a lovely example of a Subaru Impreza 
WRX STI. This one from Original has got the Pro Drive pack on it. Whatever that means, I haven't got a clue. But it's, it's a really nice example. I mean, most of these, with all due respect, look like they've either not been looked after, used as dailies, or been absolutely hammered. But this one is a really, really nice example. Um, the only reason we've got this in is we've actually refaced all the discs and the pads. This has got the uprated, um, th I think it's 350 mil AP racing brake kit. Uh, so we've we've took off, refaced the discs. I mean, I, I know a lot of you are going to comment underneath saying, oh, I wouldn't do that, you know. Um, but trust me, we haven't took much off. The, the only reason we did it is behind the disc. The front face was not too bad, so we've literally given that a very light lick. But the rear face is was very ridged, so we've took that off. The pads have got a shed load of meat on, so we've set them up on the mill, giving them a very light lick, and um, this this would be good to go. It's not a competition car; he uses it as much as he can on the road, and you know it's his pride and joy. So, rather than go and spend several hundred pounds, maybe thousands of pounds, replacing the distant pads because of that, a bit of corrosion on the back, really unnecessary. So. We do quite a lot of these. And what we do these, as I say, the pads we do on the milling machine over the back there. And around the back here, this very sort of old grubby looking machine is a disc and drum lathe. And so for doing the discs, we set them up on here. You've got the center there, which is spring loaded. And that sort of centers the disc. So it sort of runs true as in that way sits flat against there then we use you know we've got a combination of different size centers and outers we clamp the disc and you've got two cutting tips there which machine the disc from either side both at the same time making sure you've got a nice true um, face to the to the hub so as i say do a lot of discs on there and drums and that's that job complete right so the main reason for this video is got the 2.5 Mazda, which we did a video about the other day where the guy sent it in and, and um, it's, done a, it's done a big end, you know, all sorts of trouble. Um, he said it was running low oil pressure to start with and this, that, the other. You know, this, this engineer, as I said before, it was, we did it probably 10, 11 months ago, I think it was, something like that. He reckons he's used it a couple of times in competition. And like I said to you before, if you didn't watch the last video or haven't yet, it had a very sort of homemade, big wing, shallow sump. And when I say shallow, I mean seriously shallow, like probably two, two and a half inches deep. Um, reckons it holds four and a half litres of oil. But my feeling is there's a big difference between holding four and a half liters of oil on a deep sump with the pickup down the bottom and there is in a shallow sump and wide you know it's, it's yeah it's just a bit of an unknown as to how that oil is going to react especially in competition use but anyway so we found out it's done an end bearings were looking fairly rough this is the one where we got the the mysterious two mains studs that hold the main studs here that hold the crankshaft in we've got two of them underneath that have been ground off in situ now that was definitely not done when it left here um now i rang the customer the other day this was prior to taking the cylinder head off i just wanted to get another recap on on what exactly were the issues that he was having and i did say to him i said look there's two things really that are, are sort of suddenly alarming one is the homemade gasket on the pickup pipe, which obviously we didn't put on because he changed the pump to another genuine pump to see if the pressure was something to do with that, but it wasn't. Although the pump is mullered now, bear in mind this is new um, and it's looking distinctly secondhand. Um, so this was the gasket that we took off for the pickup. Yeah, so it's got a big split there or a couple of splits. And as, if you can see the hole in the center, the big hole that goes over the pickup, you see it's got probably two or three mil of it covered. So you make your own mind up about that horrible gasket. So I told him about that. 
oh, and, and he sort of stuttered a bit on there. Then I told him about the two studs that had been had, had the heads ground off, which looked like a, a reason for doing that was to, to do with clearance with this very shallow sump. Um, and he sort of said, oh, no, no, I, don't, I didn't do... I said, well, someone's done it and we haven't done it. It's been done in situ because the grinding marks are sort of horizontal all the way across the nut and the stud. So since it's been done... The, the nut hasn't been moved off. So, and he's, his reply was, well, maybe I did do it, but I can't remember. I mean, my, my memory's not great. And half the time, I can't remember what I've had for breakfast on the same day. But I would certainly remember if I took an angle grinder to two main studs in situ. Um, but anyway, that's by the by there whether he's sort of expecting some help or his money back or what. But I said, I'll tell you what, I'll go and take the head off and see what we can f- see what we've found there. Um, because he wants, he wants the head anyway. He doesn't want us to do the engine again. He's, he's give up on that. He's got another second hand engine, but I thought I'll get the head off and we'll just see what we've got in there. But there's the head and the head face. Now bear in mind, first of all, we'll look at the gasket. Um, the gasket lines. Now, I've stuck like I said to you before, most people will look at the gas, the head gasket when they have a head gasket problem. Um, but we don't really. There's, unless it's ch- blew a big chunk out the side of the gasket, which not very often it has, what you do is you look at this clean line around the firing there where the gasket's been sealing, and that is where it seals and holds the compression in. Um, we look at that for being very clean. So as you can see, that is all clean. When it's when it goes black and sort of, you know, black on the actual line and, and blowing either side, then that's where the gasket usually is blowing. But as you can see on the head side, the gasket is not blowing. And the same really on the block. Now, all we've done on the block here is obviously you get the you get the film off the head gasket on here. So what we do is take a brand new razor blade and we just remove that there we don't take any sort of emery cloth or sandpaper or anything like that wet and dry no 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 can't emphasize it enough that is a no no we just take a brand new razor blade and scrape that off okay that's all we ever do as you can see the gasket line is all looking pretty good no signs of the head gasket blowing really at all Um, but one thing that does alarm me first of all, is the state of those bores. Now, they are horrible. They look like they've had water sitting in there for quite some time. So either he's had this sitting outside with the plugs out and little ponds sitting in there, but they look like, to be honest, I my feeling is that, ju- that wouldn't happen in three or four months, let alone... Um, you know, a couple, one or two months in how long he said this has sort of been out of the car. So that was the first alarm bells. The second alarm bells is bearing in mind, we don't ever build an engine without facing the block and the head. I've said that to you before. But on close ex- inspection, of bearing in mind that I say we only ever touch it with a razor blade and this is meant to have been faced, there's witness signs here of like someone's gone over it with some sandpaper or just cleaned it off with a... Now, I'm not throwing accusations or anything like that. I'm just a little bit sceptical here. Is, is, this the, is this the same block? This, this just don't... It's something don't add up to me. Um, but as I say, I'm no, no, definitely not throwing accusations, but this just is a little bit alarming to me. So I'm going <laughs> to... And, and look at the state of the valves. I mean, they are horrible. Bear in mind, this was gone through. Knowing that this was going to be a sort of competition engine, the head that we did was gone through, blasted, seats cut, the whole works. And that looks horrid. Um, so I can't make up my mind what's going on here. I'm going to have to go and have a another sort of awkward conversation with the um, owner and um, try and get to the bottom of it. But as I say, guys, 
you know, you feel free to comment underneath. I love you guys commenting. You always put some very interesting things there. And I, to be honest, a lot of the time, you sort of make suggestions on things that we may or not have noticed or we've missed or, you know, I'll be honest with you. I'm not one of these that's too proud to say we know everything. We do not, you know, we do a lot of engines and this is what we specialize in. But there's there's certain engines out there that you some of you guys will be very familiar with and you'll make suggestions. I mean, I've even had two or three um two or three subscribers ring up that know a particular engine and made some suggestions to us for something. And we've, you know, we've took their advice and, and gone away and checked things, you know. Um, so we really appreciate that. So, yeah, comment down below, guys, um, what you reckon to this. I'd be really interested to know. Well, thanks very much, guys, for watching. Please do remember to hit that subscribe button. The channel is a month since being monetized and we really, really appreciate all you guys subscribing and watching. We really do. Just hit that notification bell, smash the subscribe button. But until another episode, thanks very much, guys, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.